Good to be with you again. It's Peter Barlas here, cardiologist. Now, a very common topic that I wanted to talk about on this video relates to palpitations. Now, you or a loved one may be suffering from these symptoms. And what are palpitations? And that's really what we want to delve into today. What are these symptoms? What are the causes? And how can we treat them? So palpitations is a general term that we use to describe the sensation of our heart beating, beating fast, beating erratically, jumping around, skipping beats. It can be a very distressing and unnerving symptom. Now I can say that it's a very, very common symptom. And in the majority of cases, the best thing that I can do after I've assessed a patient is to be able to reassure them. And in the majority of cases, the palpitations are benign. The symptoms are arising from a benign condition that is not showing us any significant problem with the heart itself. So again, palpitations can be the sensation that the heart is racing and jumping. People might notice it when they're in bed, lying down, trying to fall asleep, and the heart's just working overtime. And that, of course, creates symptoms of anxiety. We also feel this sense of we might not be able to breathe properly. We get short of breath. Sometimes you might get some pain, tightness, and these can be little fleeting pains or niggles around the chest. And again, it can cause significant distress. So I urge anybody with these symptoms to please see their general practitioner and to have a preliminary assessment of what could be causing some of these symptoms. The majority of cases, as I mentioned, are benign. I can often reassure most patients. Now, why do palpitations happen? Well, I like to divide it into two main components. One, the primary causes and primary pathologies, primary conditions that can cause palpitations. And then we've got the secondary causes. And the secondary are perhaps the most likely and most often that we see. And that can be secondary to other conditions in the body. So there are hormone issues. You might be suffering thyroid problems. An overactive thyroid sometimes can cause the heart to be racing and causing these flutters, this sensation of the heart jumping around. Other conditions that can put more stress on the body. And there are people that suffer different types of pain syndromes. And pain is a major cause of this. Sleep apnea is an unrecognized condition that can also cause palpitations. Sleep apnea is a condition whereby we are not having refreshed sleep when we're sleeping at night because of a lack of air and oxygen getting throughout our body, through our lungs, either because of an obstruction, there might be some obesity or enlargement around the neck that might be constricting the amount of air getting into our, into our lungs. But that also puts stress on the heart itself, thereby causing palpitations, causing the heart to be jumping around, to be racing. So there are simple tests that can be done, including an ECG or a tracing of the heart. There are some blood tests that can be done to look at hormone levels, for example, the thyroid, to look at kidney function, liver function, check the electrolytes in the body, check the magnesium level, check the eye and check the blood count. Sometimes being a little anemic can also add a bit more strain on the body and give us a sense of these palpitations. So there are various causes. And as I said, most of them are secondary to other things that are going on. And other things can also include things like stress, worry, psychological stress, emotional stress. And no doubt we've had difficult times in the last couple of years with you know, the pandemic and lockdowns and certainly restrictions that we've had. And there's been an increasing challenge that we've had to deal with, with poor mental well-being, depression, anxiety. And then we tend to get these physical symptoms, palpitations, the heart fluttering, racing, jumping around. And you can see that that becomes a vicious cycle. Symptoms cause more worry, more stress, more anxiety. 
that heightens our blood pressure, heightens the release of hormones throughout our body, including things like adrenaline and noradrenaline, which are the stress hormones. And then we typically get more of these symptoms. So again, having a simple set of investigations done by your general practitioner can help considerably rule out any significant underlying conditions. So as I said, the secondary causes are the most likely that we see in our community. But then there are patients who have primary rhythm problems of the heart. And these are what we call arrhythmias, or the heart might be stimulated by an extra little site, which is a focus of increasing electrical activity that stimulates the heart and makes the heart beat fast. Now that can be fast, it can be regular. People might complain or feel that their heart is racing at 150 beats per minute. Sometimes the heart can be racing in an irregular fashion and in a chaotic rhythm, in an irregular rhythm, which is called atrial fibrillation. And we will have a separate topic on atrial fibrillation because it is one of the most common type of rhythm problems that we see in our community. But these are primarily conditions that affect the heart and the electrical supply of the heart and the wiring to cause the sense of the heart racing. So again, I think it is important to assess these symptoms. And there are some preliminary tests that we said, including an ECG. You might be asked to also have a monitor. And that can allow us to monitor the heart rate and the rhythm for, say, 24 hours, but more recently there are monitors that can look at monitoring the heart for up to 30 days. And these monitors can give us information about when these symptoms are happening, how often they are happening, and where they might be arising from in terms of the heart and the electrical wiring of the heart. Other tests that might be useful include that of an ultrasound of the heart, and that's called an echocardiogram. Now, an ultrasound ensures that our heart muscle is structurally working normally. It allows us to look at the heart muscle, the thickness, to look for underlying conditions of the heart, to look at how the valves are performing. Again, these are all conditions that can cause these palpitations and these flutters. So I think most often we can reassure you and cursory a set of investigations that can be useful to rule out underlying cardiac conditions. As I said, the monitor is useful. Important to check your blood test to look for hormone imbalances, the thyroid in particular, to also address things like underlying sleep apnea that might be contributing. And then there are lifestyle conditions and, you know, being overweight, not active physically. These are all conditions that can make us a little bit more sedentary can increase our blood pressure, and that also has a role of potentially increasing and making your heart work a bit harder and a bit stronger, and can give us a sense of these palpitations or the heart jumping around. So simple things to address these symptoms are to, to look at what are the underlying causes. Hydration is a very, very important thing, and we often find that not drinking enough fluids during the course of the day, and perhaps drinking a bit too much caffeine, coffees, tea, but also alcohol. These are all important stimulants that can actually cause more of these flutters. Smoking is another important lifestyle uh, factor that we do need to consider. Nicotine obviously can sometimes, as we, you know, and, and for those who smoke, do use the cigarette as some vehicle to help with relaxation and de-stress you at a time of, you know, at a time of heightened stress. But again, the nicotine stimulates the heart and the wiring of the heart, causing palpitations, causing tachycardia where the heart is racing. So we need to look at addressing these lifestyle factors, the smoking, reducing the alcohol, having a balanced diet, sleep, ensuring that we have adequate sleep to allow our body to be restful and recovered. And then we look at the underlying causes, the primary causes that cause palpitations, that do warrant further investigations. You know, and there might be medications that we can use to help settle down the heart, to stop it from racing too fast, or to control the rhythm of the heart in patients who might have things like fibrillation or atrial fibrillation, and there, again, various other conditions there. So what I wanted to do today is just summarize that palpitations are very common. Most often, 
I can reassure patients about the cause of their palpitations, and they often settle down with simple lifestyle maneuvers, hydration, minimizing caffeine, increasing exercise, ensuring there's no underlying conditions like sleep apnea. So magnesium supplementation can also be very, very useful. You know, magnesium is often a very useful electrolyte for our muscles, and the heart being one of the more important muscles in our body can respond quite nicely to having some magnesium on board. And that often can settle things down, particularly before bed, to help ease these symptoms. But again, if you are concerned, you please do see your local healthcare professional or general practitioner. And as I said, there are a series of investigations that are quite simple to undertake that will give us a lot of reassurance to further work out how we can improve your symptoms and therefore your quality of life. Thanks for joining me.